your job, your mate, even the grades you got in high school. These may be surprising triggers of Alzheimer's, according to new research presented at the Alzheimer's Association International Conference in London. Researchers identified common stressful life experiences, like a bad breakup or trouble paying your bills, that can add up to four years to your brain age. So how exactly do these experiences relate to your Alzheimer's risk? Core team member Dr. Jennifer Cardell sat down with David LeBond, the doctor leading the memory assessment program at Rowan University. What they found is that individuals who reported a greater occurrence of stressful events actually performed worse on neuropsychological tests measuring attention and concentration. For the first time, we've taken this groundbreaking research and boiled it down to an at-home quiz of surprising triggers you can take today to assess your Alzheimer's risk. And we're giving you solutions, like a 90-second fix to shut down any kind of stress. So Dr. Carlos here. What about folks watching right now who say, well, gee, that's great. But I can't get rid of the stress in my life. Well, you know, it's really important. These quizzes are really not intended to bum us out. They're really to give us a guide to see what stresses are in our lives and how we might be able to improve on them. So it's really personalized care at its finest. So fascinatingly, in some populations, these stressful events had a bigger impact on cognitive function than genes. Diet, you know, even age. Right. You know, this study, um, researchers were looking at the link between race and stress and cognition. I thought the results were astounding. Uh, one thing they found was African American participants reported 60% more stressful events than white participants. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. The second thing that researchers concluded was that for African Americans in the study, each stressful event was equivalent to four years of brain aging. Oh my. That's compared to 1.5 years of brain aging for white participants. Think about it, four years versus 1.5. That's astounding. And so researchers are really thinking about, you know, they, they feel like this re really reaffirms the connection between stress and cognition, but also disparities. You know, as an African American female, as a physician, as someone who has a family history of dementia, these results really hit home. But I do want to put it in perspective for people. You know, it's not all doom and gloom. These are preliminary results. We need more studies and it doesn't prove cause and effect. But this really is a wake up call for all of us. Let's get to the quiz. Come on over. You can take the quiz on DrOz.com. There's 10 surprising possibilities. We're going to show to you, right? And all these questions, you're going to just keep track of how many you said yes to. That's all you have to do right now, right? First questions have to do with childhood stress. Yes, okay, so have you repeated a grade at school? That might be one stressor, potentially. Okay, um, have you gotten expelled or suspended or dropped out of school? Kind yeah. of similar. If you forgot yeah. that, I, I don't believe you. <laughs> All right. And then did your parents get a divorce, which we know can be a big stressor for many people. All right, so those are three things. These, again, I'm hoping you realize these are not questions we would normally ask, but now we're beginning to realize they're important. Come on over. Right. The next set of questions moves us from childhood stress, which you have yes. nothing to do with, really just happened to you, to financial stress, which could be more of a mix. First question, have you ever lost a job or experienced an, unex uh, an extended period of unemployment? Okay? Because what happens? You don't control your destiny. Right. Did you ever lose your home due to finances, a fire, or a flood? So acts of God and some that aren't, but you lost your home, something that's so important to us. Right. Did you ever declare bankruptcy or had to go on welfare or benefits? Yeah. So financial stress is pretty, it's rampant these days. How, this is huge. Yeah, how does financial stress affect our brain? Well, you know, it affects us a lot. And as a family physician, I see a lot of patients coming in with stress. And honestly, financial stress is one of the most common types of stress. It's important we don't underestimate it. It can be just as severe, sometimes even more so than other stressors. So we've got to pay attention to that financial stress. Yeah, it's not just something at the end of the day to worry about. Right. Every day you got to focus on it. Absolutely. All right, next set of questions has to do with your personal relationships. Yes. And go ahead and walk us through these. Absolutely. So also stressors. Have you ever been cheated on? You know, anyone that's been cheated on, we know what it feels like. It's stressful. It yep. can be, certainly. Um, suffered the loss of a parent, a sibling, or a child. You know, obviously very stressful, that family stress and the loss of a loved one. The, ne the next set of questions has to do with your personal relationships, right? And they, they, these ones have to do with trauma. Have you ever, ever been physically or sexually assaulted? Right? We're very, very common in America. And have you ever joined the armed forces or experienced combat? So today, an anti-Alzheimer's stress plan you can use right this second. But before we get to the plan, Dr. Caudill, 
found a woman in our audience who was worried stress is affecting her brain. So Dr. Caudill, who'd you find? So this is Asha. Hi. So yeah, so tell us about what's been going on with you. Well, this year alone I was out without work for five months mm -hmm. and that alone brought in a lot of financial stress. Yes. And now living paycheck to paycheck, trying to play catch up, you know, wondering if I'm gonna be able to make my mortgage payments or if I'm gonna lose my home. It just weighs on my shoulders on a daily basis daily basis. Yeah, no, it's tough. And uh, your story is shared by so many, and it is really tough. Yeah. The, the quiz we gave probably identified for you additional stresses, but finances is a good example of one that turns, puts us down the rabbit hole. Absolutely. But here's the good news. The whole reason we're doing this show is because we can reverse, we believe, uh, and we should be able to help you. Okay, so coming over. The damage that's done can be undone, and that's the beautiful part of all the work we're doing on Alzheimer's these days. So let's get to the anti-Alzheimer's stress plan. Don Joseph Goey is here, he developed it, and he says the first step, the first step is to be more aware of your fearful thinking to extinguish stress reactions in your brain. This is a big step. The question is, how important are these stressors and what can you do to stop them? Dr. Goey, Mr. Goey. So one thing that's really important to understand is that all of our moods are produced by the thoughts we believe. And this is really exciting research uh, uh, finding. 85% of what people worry about never happens. <laughs> is that true for you? Sometimes, yes. Right, almost yes. nine out of 10 things you worry about and ruminate over that wakes you up in the morning and doesn't let you go to sleep at night is stuff that's never gonna happen. Absolutely. That's right. And yet, yet we continue to worry about it. All right, so I want you to go through what happens in our brains when we're feared. So we're, let's say we're all closing our eyes. Everyone do this with me. Just gonna sort of get calm in your moment. What does fear do to us? For everybody, close your eyes. Imagine that you're at sleep at night. It's last night. You're warm and cozy in bed. Breathing softly, very happy. I'm relaxed. <laughs> How you doing, Asha? I'm good. <laughs> and then, oh, <laughs> a big uh, noise. That was mean. That was. <laughs> mean is the word that comes to mind. <laughs> I was smashed out of that. <laughs> well, what's going to happen is, is that your stress response system, your survival system is going to bolt you straight up in bed. Your brain is going to scan the environment looking for where's the threat. And imagine that you get up out of bed, you walk to the window, you look, in, look down the street, and there you see that old pesky raccoon trotting down the street. You realize he knocked over the garbage can again. Mm -hmm. And what's going to happen for you is that your brain is going to release a peptide that is going to calm you down, is going to clear the stress hormones, and now you're going to be able to go back to sleep. And, and as you begin to do the practice that I just gave you, the more that you do that practice, every time you do it, you're going to be releasing that peptide. It's going to calm you down. It's going to give you the brain function to do whatever you need to do next and to do it well. Amazing. Let me go through a, an important step, which is to create this habit loop. So you, you like ice cream. I love ice cream. Remember when you were a little kid and the ice cream <laughs> truck would come by? Mm -hmm. da 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 Music, right. <laughs> what would happen? What would happen? What would happen is, you'd all run down to the curb, right? You gotta cue the music. Da 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 You're running down to the curb. Your routine is get near the ice cream truck because it's gonna stop pretty soon. And then there's a reward. They're gonna give you ice cream. This is what's happening in our body. But unfortunately, it's going the wrong way for a lot of us. Now, Asha, you already mentioned that you were out of work for a little bit. You're living paycheck to paycheck, trying to catch up with your mortgage payments. Very real issues. And money's a big problem for a lot of Americans. How do you use a habit loop when you have a struggle like that? How do you use this for your benefit? The way you use it for your benefit is through, first thing is awareness. The more aware you are of that, without judging yourself for, for being that way, the more it releases that peptide, which moves you to the next step in which you can ask yourself, what does my experience become when I don't believe that thought? When I don't believe I'm broke, I'm destitute, I'm headed for the poorhouse. And what most people experience is they experience a feeling of relief. And then I encourage them to relax into that relief. And as they relax into it, their mind expands a little bit. And a moment later, they're at peace. All right, the next step in the anti-Alzheimer's stress plan is a 90-second trick to stop down any stress reaction in the brain. You can all do it right now. It all has to do with a simple little button you already have on your body. So, Don, take us through it. So, we have a 90-second window to circumvent 
a stress reaction that if we don't circumvent, it's going to create a knee-jerk st stress reaction in which you're going to behave badly and you're going to regret it later. And so the 90-second window, the tool that gets you through the 90-second window in time is called the clear button. And here's how it works. H uh, hold your palm in front of your face and with the index finger, press the button in the middle and you keep pressing it. Right about there, smack in the middle. Right smack in the middle. Right. And you keep pressing it. And you can close your eyes if you want. Relate to your breathing. And we're going to count to three. I'm going to think of each number as a color. So t on the in-breath, count one. And on the out-breath, think red. On the in-breath, count two. And on the out-breath, think blue. On the in-breath, count three. And on the out-breath, think green. Now release the button and let your mind go completely blank for about 10 seconds. Just be free of the world and all its stress for 10 seconds. And now when you come back to this situation where a knee-jerk stress reaction might have made you behave badly, uh, you're now clear to make a better choice, to make a better decision, to do something more positive and proactive. The reason this is, I'm so passionate about this is because stress is something we all write off to a little issue we got to get through in life. Mm -hmm. When I begin to learn, as Dr. Carr outlined, that it's actually making us more prone to having Alzheimer's, especially some of us. Mm -hmm. It's no longer a minor little thing. Because the person you're hurting isn't the people around you, mm -hmm. it's yourself. That's right. right. Good thank luck you. to you. Don, thank, thank you. you very, very much. Thank That's quite you. a wonderful advice. Appreciate it. You can get the full plan on DrOz.com. Don's book is called The End of Stress. We'll be right back.